Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to uh, Gilbert High School and our uh, Meet the Candidates Forum tonight. I'd like to send out a special thank you to our School Improvement Council, our chair, Ms. Kayla Arce, sitting in the back there. She uh, worked very hard getting this event uh, put together. Take care of the two. We'd like to give her a round of applause. Thank you. Also, um, all the other members of our School Improvement Council um, worked diligently to put this on. We, we, we did it on uh, short notice, but we were able to get it together. We're glad that you guys are here to join us. Um, what we're going to do tonight is just introduce the candidates, um, and they're going to have about two minutes just to introduce themselves to you, and then also give you a little bit about why they're running for school board or why they're running for re-election to the school board. So we're going to start that with uh, Mr. Rutu Bonsley. He's going to start off. And um, the one of the thing is, um, um, like you know, as it seems, I mean, you know, it seems that world world is getting smaller and smaller due to the technology and all that, all this internet and, and, and things like that. But yet, one thing we must not forget that you know we are getting larger in number. You know, um, China alone 1.7 billion people and all that. So how do we stand, you know, among all these people when it comes to? The, you know, the, the intellectual capacity. Where do we get that? And, here, and I've been talking to a bunch of people around here, and like, you know, sometimes, you know, I get very, very mixed feeling. Like, people think they have a lot of money. But money can take only so far you in life. But, you know, the acquired knowledge is something that, which cannot be stripped away from you, you know? So, these are the things. I've got a bunch of agenda, which, you know, I know that everybody needs little time here, but, you know, I'm running because one of the things, you know, we need to introduce. I mean, here's the thing, like, you know, I have an idea. I mean, all, everybody is iPhone, I suppose. And when the three came, then the four came, so they always be going to progression. But we have a great school district, but how can we make it greater? Because, you know, and, and the thing is about, like, you know, I was talking to a bunch of, like, moms, and they said, we, we, we have this thing, this thing, this thing. But, you know, the ideas, you know, we need to bring people together, listen to them what they want, and be truthful, because, you know, one thing good about this position that this is non-political. If this would have been political, I wouldn't be running for this position at all. So, like, you know, it's, and, and we live in the great country, because I travel, I go to China, I mean, they try so hard to teach their children. But, you know, when I come back, they are lacking in so many things that what we have. But how can we take that all information and make it better? But the rest of the thing, I will sort of, like, you know, find another opportunity. And thank you very much for inviting me here, and God bless. Thank you, Mr. Bonsley. Next, Ms. Hazelforth Duell. other guys that are running that you 
them would get two to three minutes. They told me I could have 30. So, <laughs> um, anyway, I thank y'all for being here. I was on the school board from 2006 to 2010, and I learned quite a bit whenever I was on the board at that time. I didn't run for re-election at that time because my dad was um, having some physical problems and um, he's recently passed away so I had some family matters I needed to, that were closer to me at that time. So um, the reason I am running this time, I still have a child that's in um, school, he's at Lexington High School. I see that um, the things that he's doing, I see some, some changes that I feel need to be made. I'm all for technology. Some technology is good, not all technology is good. I have seen that with him. And um, I feel like we need to teach our children critical thinking. They don't know how to read and write. They use the computers, they use the iPads to do their work for them. And um, I don't agree with that. They, they need to, to learn. Um, we have excellent teachers in this district and um, administrators. I feel like, um, and this is this is what I feel, that um, the building is not what makes the students learn. It's the teachers that make the students learn. And, and I'm grateful for that. We need to put more money in the classroom for the teachers than in the building. And that's my belief. So I appreciate y'all coming and listening to me. And um, I want to be here for the teachers and the taxpayers and our children. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Duell. Next, Mr. Anthony Faraci.
everything that has to do with the student, um, the school board. And I think that I can bring some of that common sense to it. I know I don't have a PhD. I know I don't have a master's. I will have my bachelor's come February. But we need to bring some common sense and some values to the way we spend people's money that's not ours. And bring a little bit more responsibility to the people who live in this community. Next, Ms. Janet Fraser. Good evening. My name is Janet Fraser. I appreciate the opportunity to come speak to you tonight. Um, I am originally from Augusta, Georgia. I have been in Lexington for 17 of the past 21 years. My husband is from Gilbert. He still has family here. Gilbert is a great community to raise children and enjoy your life, as well as Lexington County as a whole. We are one of the fastest growing school districts in this state. Um, but I do want to make a point. I am not related to Danny Frazier. Everybody asks that question right off the bat. If they don't ask it, they're thinking it. Um, I have over 22 years federal service. I worked for the Federal Aviation Administration for 15 years. Transportation Security Administration, when Homeland Security started up um, in 2002 after 9-11. And then for the past five and a half years, I've been working for the Department of Justice at the National Advocacy Center in Columbia. I also am a board member at the Arc of South Carolina, which is um, the nonprofit agency that is also associated with the national chapter. We advocate on the, we advocate on the for the rights of citizens with intellectual disabilities and development of, developmental disabilities. I was the um, past president for two years, and I'm currently on the board as the past president. I also advocate on behalf of um, students, and there's a student in, in attendance tonight that I advocated for uh, several years. Um, he's from Lexington High School. As your school board representative, I will work to increase accountability, transparency, and provide more resources for the, for the classroom, the teachers and students, without increasing taxes. As a parent and taxpayer, you want to know that your child is safe and will be educated. I hear way too often about a child that has spent 15 or 16 years in the classroom, obtained all 24 credits, but failed the HSAP. They walk across that stage to obtain a certificate of attendance or a certificate of completion. That is not acceptable. We, we spend nearly a quarter of a million dollars educating that child, and at the end of the day, they still don't have that credential. We need to do a way better job of that. Um, now that they've changed the cohort, previously the graduation rate included all children that got a certificate of attendance, certificate of completion, met their goals on their IEPs for children with special education, um, as well as obtain a diploma. Now they've changed that. You can only count children in graduation rate that graduated in four years of beginning the ninth grade. So our graduation rates have decreased. I think right now the latest figure I received from the district was 84%. Um, as a taxpayer, you want to know where your hard-earned money is going. I will demand increased transparency and more communication in order for you to know that your money is being spent wisely. With all the technology that we have, and especially as technology savvy as Lexington School District 1 is, we need to broadcast the school board meetings and all meetings. The Department of Ed implemented a program, I think a little over a year ago, called Ustream, where all board meetings are televised live. And then that podcast is uploaded to their website to where any citizen, anybody, anywhere in the country can view that school board meeting at a later date. That is not an expensive um, operation to complete because I believe there's probably already wiring there. We videotape them 
as it is. But the, but the public needs to see those meetings so that they can be kept abreast of any changes. Um, and also the iPads. Technology is great, but we need to put, we, I, I believe we put the cart before the horse. The teachers needed additional training. The IT staff at the schools needed additional training. A lot of the children are playing games, and I know the first year everybody's trying to get their, you know, feel for the iPads, but I see kids playing games way too often on them. I have to remove mine from my son every night because he's staying up wanting to play on it, so we have to do a charging station. He gets up his iPad at bedtime, we put it on the charging station in, in a specified location, and he gets it the next morning before he goes to class. That way I don't have to worry about whether it's on or off. Um, I want to ensure that teachers have the necessary resources in order to effectively teach our children. With our district reaching a 50% poverty level, the kids that are eligible for Medicaid and free and reduced lunches, our educational landscape has changed. Um, and I want to thank every teacher, staff, bus driver, nurse, janitor, and administrator that has dedicated their life to the well-being of children in this community because that is the state's future. Let's advise wisely in this endeavor. I would like to ask for your support on November the 6th. And if you want change, then vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fraser. Next, Ms. Rhonda Gunner. deserves the best that Lexington One has to offer. 
Our district and each and every school requires the attention to become remarkable. Every school, not the district as a whole, each individual school requires everyone's dedication to become remarkable. I hope to be able to facilitate these needs. Please vote for Rhonda on November the 6th and thank you in advance for your support.
Thank you, Ms. Haggard. Next, Dr. Ed Horman. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ed Harmon, and I'm seeking a fourth term in the school board for election in District 1. I want to first of all thank the School Improvement Council for having us here tonight. And I want to thank each one of these candidates here for your commitment to public education and your commitment to public service. I do appreciate that very much. I am a native of Lexington. As a matter of fact, I was born in my parents' house about halfway between Lexington and Red Bank. My mother had a negative experience at the hospital when my older sister was born, and she decided that when it was time for me to be born, she wasn't going to the hospital. Thank goodness I had a cousin who was a doctor who came to my parents' house and delivered me along with my grandmother and my aunts. Uh, but it does give me a convenient excuse if someone says to me, what is wrong with you? I can say, well, I didn't get that immediate hospital attention. Um, <laughs> I'm a native of Lexington. I'm a product of Lexington District 1, uh, as are my wife, Deborah, my wife of 37 years, graduated from Lexington High School. She works at Lexington Medical Center. And our son, Adam, uh, who graduated from Lexington High School and is a teacher in Lexington District 1. We're very proud of him and, and what he has, has accomplished. I received a Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of South Carolina in 1974. My wife and I got married in January of 1975, and then we immediately moved to Louisville, Kentucky, and we began studies at Southern Seminary there. And I received a Master of Divinity in 1978, and then a PhD in Old Testament Studies in 1983 from that institution. I worked in the field of human services for about 16 and a half years, working with very capable people who just happen to have special needs. For the last 12 years, I've been employed by the South Carolina Department of Public Safety, and I serve as the Assistant Director of the Office of Highway Safety. I have been honored and privileged to serve on this board for the last 12 years. This district has great communities and great schools. I want to continue the district's initiatives toward the development of 21st century graduates. Students that will be able to function and succeed in a global world economy. I also want to maintain the excellence that has been a hallmark of this district since its inception in 1952. Most people don't know this, but in the late 40s, educators statewide here in South Carolina referred to the schools that were to eventually make up Lexington District 1 as Little Harbor. I don't know if you can get a better endorsement than that. So we've been an excellent district from the beginning. And let me say that, that I'm very proud of the record of our school board in the last 12 years. We have a mission statement that says Lexington District 1 is a place where the arts, academics, and athletics connect. When you have that kind of situation, what happens is you, you develop students who are very well balanced. And I am very proud of that. Let me say also, because there have been some comments made about this, the demographics of our district are changing. That is one key reason why our personal mobile computing initiative is so important. Let me tell you that the iPad initiative is a game changer and it levels the playing field for our students. Since our demographics are changing, there are many students who would never be able to afford a piece of equipment like that that can open up the world to them and give them uh, great assistance in the pursuit of their education. And I'm so thankful that we've been able to provide that for our students. As I told you, we have, we have great teachers, we have great administrators, uh, we have great support staff. We have great facilities. But more importantly than that, we've got great students. And we have great parents who have supported us in what we've done for the last 12 years, who have uh, been encouraging to us uh, uh, parents and students 
um, who give of their time and their energies to make sure that we are the absolute best that we can be. Our district doesn't just have a positive statewide reputation. Our district is recognized nationally, and I would put Lexington District 1 up against any district nationwide. I will tell you, tell you very quickly, I've had the privilege of serving on the Federal Relations Network of the National School Board Association for our district for a number of years. We go to Washington every year and we advocate for public education. And, and I get to meet people from all over the United States and, and many, many school districts. And it's amazing to me how many people from other states come up to me and they look at my name tag and they go, you're from Lexington 1 in South Carolina. We've heard about your history. We know what you're doing. We know that you're cutting edge. We know that you put students and families first. And let me tell you, that's, that's very, very comforting to me and I think is a strong statement about what we've been providing for a number of years. Um, I'm very proud and very honored to have been serving on this board and I'm asking you on November 6th when you enter the voting booth uh, to please remember me. And again, I want to thank uh, the School Improvement Council School Improvement Council again for having us here tonight and, and these fine candidates for your commitment to public education. And I will say that my commitment to public education in general and to Lexington One specifically, I believe makes me a strong candidate to serve another term on this board. Thank y'all so much for being here. It's a pleasure to see y'all. Thank you, Dr. Harmon. Next, Ms. Deborah Kelder. Next, 
Dr. Brent Powers. Can you hear me? Well, uh, my name is Brent Powers, and I appreciate the chance to come and talk with you tonight. Um, I want to share a couple things. First, uh, who I am. Secondly, why I'm running for school board. And thirdly, what you can expect if you vote for me for school board. First and foremost, I'm a believer. I'm a member of Mount Forum United Methodist Church, where I'm active in both adult small group ministries as well as our children ministries. I'm a husband of 16 years and a father of three beautiful daughters. Emma Grace, who is a fifth grader, Bryce, who is a second grader, and Molly, who's a four-year-old, and will be entering kindergarten next year. I'm a current parent at Rocky Creek Elementary School, a future parent at Pleasant Hill Middle School, and Lexington High School. I'm running for school board because I believe in public school. It's where I've met my wife, it's where I've played sports and learned the important life lessons that you can't learn in the classroom. And it's where I've earned enough AP credit to essentially go to Wake Forest University as a sophomore. At Wake Forest, I studied both chemistry and German. I spent seven months in Freiburg, Germany, living with three other German students and taking classes at the university. After I finished college, I stayed for a doctorate in medicine and also a master's in business and finance. I've been back home in the Midlands now for eight years and living and working in Lexington County. I'm a physician at Lexington Medical Center and for the past four years have served in the leadership role as chief medical officer at the hospital. In that role, I have to deal with 600 physicians, just under 6,000 employees now, as we deliver care for just under a million patient encounters this past year. As you can imagine, it is a high intense uh, job and role. It's oftentimes I'm the, uh, the means of uh, compromise between our physicians, our nurses, and other patient advocates. If elected to school board, I will advocate for our kids to become working, productive members of our community. I believe that's either through a vocational career or through a continued collegiate educa education. If elected school board, I will advocate for our teachers. I believe strongly that the strength of organizations is dependent on its people. I'll have, advocate for them, their support staff, as well as their administrators. And if elected school board, I will make decisions based upon the principles of transparency, community, and grace. I know, like me, you are here because you're concerned about our schools and our community. I believe the school system is the public, I believe the public school system is the backbone of our economy. It's what attracts parents to live in Lexington County, and it's what attracts businesses to position themselves in Lexington County. I believe the public school system is also the heart and soul of the community. It's where people come together on Friday night to watch a football game. It's where people come Saturday and Sundays to see their kids perform. And it's where all of us congratulate accomplishments at whatever levels through the school district. Thank you for your time, thank you for your vote. Glad to answer your questions. Thank you, Dr. Powers. Next, Ms. Cynthia Smith. Well, first of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming tonight. Um, it means a lot that you got this investment in our community. And I want to thank the Gilberts uh, School Improvement Council. They have made us feel so welcome with the decorations and the delicious food, so thank you, Council. They said parents have been bringing praise all day. We really appreciate that. I've been a trustee since 2000, and I'm currently the school board chairman, which I have served in that capacity for the past three years. I can honestly tell you it is an honor and a privilege to serve the children of Lexington One and to serve the I grew up in a home that valued education. My mother was a public school teacher, she's now retired, and she and my dad put themselves through college and they were going to do everything in their power to make sure that my brother and I had an excellent education. I took those same values along when I had my own children, and I'm the mother of two daughters who are graduates of the Lexington One School District. And the reason I got involved with the school board is because I started on that train that just starts out with if you'll make cupcakes for PTA, if you'll serve on this chair, this committee for School Improvement Council. And the next thing I knew, I had a full-fledged career at PTA, and I was the chairman of the School Improvement Council, and I stayed in those roles pretty much their entire school career. 
And I can honestly tell you that was so much fun and so rewarding. After that, I got called on by the district. I guess they saw sucker written across my forehead. <laughs> and they asked me if I would chair one of the facilities committees, which I did early on. And then they asked me if I would chair a committee to talk about bringing child care into after school programs in each of our elementary schools. And that seems like a million years ago because now that is such an integral part of our schools. And we offer that program for our parents and our students. And I'm really proud to have made, been on that committee and made that recommendation. I am a graduate of the University of South Carolina Honors College. That is where I met my husband. We are big time Gamecocks. So I'll just go ahead and tell you that right up front. <laughs> like I told you, my daughters are graduates of Lexington One, and I could not be more proud of them. My oldest daughter graduated from USC last December, and she is a first year teacher down in Berkeley County and she lives in Mount Pleasant. And my youngest daughter graduated from the College of Charleston this past May, and she is in the Philippines. She, is, she has been accepted into the Peace Corps program. So far, she has survived a typhoon, an earthquake, and a tsunami warning since she's been there. And she's a teacher as well. She teaches English fluency at an elementary school in the Philippines, and she'll be there two more years. So they've got education in their blood as well. My husband and I own our own business, Safe Car Business Systems. And prior to that, I worked at Colonial Life and Accident for 15 years. And at that, in, in that particular position, that is where I managed hundreds of uh, employees and I managed millions of dollars. I am extremely budget conscious and I am very familiar with setting budgets and maximizing every single penny. In Lexington One, of every dollar, 83 goes to our classrooms and our teachers. I could not be more proud of that number. The state law says we only have to split 70 cents in a classroom. And Lexington One puts 83 cents. And basically, the other 17 cents turn on the power, turn on the water, and pay our principals. So you can see that we are very good stewards of your dollars. I want to tell you just a little bit real quickly about some of our accomplishments. Since I've been on the board, are you ready? 6,000 students have joined the Lexington One family since 2000. 6,000. So when people talk about building schools, I'll be honest, I wish we didn't have to build something. But we have to have a place to house these kids. I mean, 6,000 is it's the equivalent of a school a year. And so I'm really pleased that the community has voted on two bond referendums and told us to go ahead and build schools in the community gave us that permission. Right now, we have 23,000 students in the district. We have 3,500 employees. And Mr. Powers works for the number one employer in the county. Guess what? Lexington One is the second largest employer in the county. We are a big, big business. And, and one thing I'm really proud of for the Gilbert community is with the bond referendum, we were able to build this brand new high school during my time on the and we were able to build your new stadium and free up some classrooms because y'all had so much work out here as well. This year we did receive an A on our district report card and that we were so excited about that. And we actually had an outside consulting group come in called Advanced Ed. They go around in every district in the nation. And our particular team told us we were the best school district they had ever in fact, one of the ladies from Kansas, as she was leaving to go to the airport, turned to me and started crying. And I said, why are you crying? And she said, because I see what is so wonderful, and I have to go home to a district that doesn't have the standards and the push and the drive and the community members and the parents who want the same thing. And she said, you are so blessed to be in Lexington. And I couldn't agree more. We have some real exciting things going on in Gilbert. Uh, we recently put in the Spanish Immersion Program where the children spend half a day learning in Spanish, they spend half a day learning in English. Generally speaking, by the time they're in sixth grade, they are completely fluent in Spanish. And next year we're going to open the Center for Sustainable St Solutions and both of those guarantee those students jobs. That is what we are about and that is my personal goal in Lexington is I want our students to be prepared for career, work, and life. Because
because everything goes into making the students successful. All I can say in closing is it has been a true blessing to serve on your school board these past 12 years. I, I cannot tell you how rewarding it is. For those of you who don't know, it is an unpaid position. It is strictly volunteer. And I could not ask for a better job. And I ask on November 6th that you go to the polls and vote for me, Cindy Smith. Thank you so much for coming. Theodore Z. My name is Ted Z. It's be Ted on the ballot. You go. I'm running for school board because I feel I can bring a balanced perspective to the position of school board trustee. I have two children in Lexington. One, TJ, my son, is currently a senior in Lexington High School. He's had his iPad issues, but he's overcome that and actually helped students through IMSE, which is, I think, great. My daughter is an eighth grader at Pleasant Hill Middle School, and my wife is an assistant principal at Pleasant Hill Middle School, and we've been married for 20 years. I became involved in the education world. When my son started at PHMS, I ran for school group and council, and I served on there for three years, and I was chairman for two of those years. I also served on the 2008 School Community Facility Study Committee, where a large group of citizens met to discuss and plan the direction of the infrastructure needs of Lexington School District 1. We are currently in a five-year building phase, which was approved by the voters of our district. Many of the improvements you see here in the Gilbert schools are part of this plan. I've served on the Government Relations Committee with the district. I served one year on the Superintendent's Parent Advisory Council. In 2008, I offered my services to serve as a substitute teacher. Although I no longer do this, it gave me great perspective into the needs of the teachers and students alike. As a small business owner and homeowner, I also bring the perspective of the taxpayer. I feel that my experience as parent, business owner, SIC chair, substitute teacher, and serving on these committees gives the voters someone they can count on to balance the growth, taxes, education, and spending at the school board level. So when you go to vote for the ABCs at Lexington, vote C. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Z. Is Miss Toyika Campbell in attendance? Well, once again, I'd like to thank all the candidates. Let's give all of them a round of applause. And This time we still have plenty of food left, so uh, feel free to help yourself and continue to mingle with the candidates. Once again, thank you for being here.